How is this going to go down? I'll show the pen, go over some details, share my first impressions, then proceed with the doodling portion. As they say, forewarned is forearmed. Plus, I don't want anyone running to the comments yelling, I was promised doodles. Patience, it's coming. Hi, I'm Irene. The fountain pen here is a Pilot Prera with a medium nib. The color is a very dark brown. The design strikes me as simple but classic. There are several metal bands strategically placed that enhance its looks. Both brand and model names are subtly placed on the cap. The Prera is on the small side, being only four and three quarters inches long. While I believe it's mostly plastic, it doesn't feel cheap to me. And with the cap posted, the pen feels good in my hand. I don't recall what producer Mike said he paid for this, but I found the same pen in various colors listed on Amazon for between $20 and $30. As there was no converter included, I made do by flushing out the included ink cartridge and refilling it with a color of my choosing. In this case, that was Diamine's Tobacco Sunburst. It's one in a series of inks inspired by the Gibson Les Paul guitars. I'd seen some swatches online and was hooked by the brown tones that brought to mind honey, wood, caramel, and leather. Speaking of browns, how do you like my new woven placemat? Oh, well, it was on screen a moment ago. Recently, my friend Gail took me to lunch, and afterward we shopped at Daiso. I bought that placemat and a few other items for the studio, including several small makeup racks. They're clear acrylic and can hold nine lipsticks each. <laughs> no, I'm not dolling myself up for these voiceovers. They hold my sample size vials of ink. It's not ideal. The cubbies are a bit too roomy, so the vials rattle around, but it keeps them upright and organized, so it works well enough. Normally, I'm not too bothered by ghosting and show through, but for the doodles in this notebook at least, I didn't want that on display. So using a dot roller, I applied adhesive to the back sides of the pages so I could stick them together. That means I give up half of the pages, but I think it's worth it for an overall nicer presentation. Like last time, this doodle was made up on the spot. I cut out the pauses where I'm just holding the pen and thinking about what to do next. This video was very nearly titled, I was not prepared. Uh, see, that's why it didn't happen. On the subject of being unprepared, no matter how many shopping bags are stashed in the car, I keep forgetting to grab them before heading in to get groceries. I actually like our reusable shopping bags. They're sturdy, flat-bottomed, and the size is just right. The baby bear of bags. I don't understand it. Maybe I just get a kick out of juggling a case of cola, a bag of tomatoes, four cans of soup, two liquid coffee creamers, frozen chicken thighs, and a loaf of bread. One of these days, it will click, and I'll never forget again. One can hope, anyway. The nib is medium, but an Asian nib is not the same as a European nib, so this pilot medium writes significantly smaller than some of my other medium nibbed pens. I can write small if I have to, but that's not my default setting. So this doodling experience was rather frustrating. I ended up going over the sketch lines more than I normally would, and the feedback bordered on scratchy. This was surprising, since I'd seen a number of reviews praising Pilot's nibs, in all sizes, as being notable for their smoothness. 
I really wish this Prera had a broad or even a stub nib instead of a medium. But it seems like those aren't easy to find when it comes to Asian-made fountain pens, at least here in the U.S. Maybe I'm making too much of this. Correct me if I'm wrong. The point is, I think a broader nib, or perhaps just a wetter one, would have been more enjoyable for me and would have better displayed tobacco sunbursts' lovely shading properties. Now, I must confess, this pen was pretty much straight out of the box, meaning I hadn't done any tweaking to the pen itself. Well, aside from replacing the ink in the cartridge. So it's possible that I can adjust the nib to my liking, maybe with some feeler gauges or micro mesh. Micro mesh isn't something I've acquired yet, but I've heard it's useful for smoothing a scratchy nib. I've drawn enough scrolls where, in a pinch, it's a reliable space filler. I'll go so far as to say that I know scrolls like the back of my... Whoa, whose pinky finger is that? Doodling is possibly the most accessible form of arting. You could grab anything at hand, a pencil, a pen, a muddy stick, and go to town on textbook margins. I mean, who hasn't drawn naked people doing naked things in their copy of Biology 101? <laughs> Look, this is all starting to sound a little blah, blah, blah to my ears, and I wouldn't blame you for hitting mute. All I ask is that you also hit like, subscribe, and maybe leave a comment. Please and thank you. You get to turn me off. I have to live with this voice. I love browns. In fact, my favorite watercolor color is quinacridone gold, which is technically a yellow, but while its washes have a warm brightness, its mass tone is a deep brownish gold. As a mixer, it helps to create gorgeous shades of brown and generally plays with other colors beautifully. This tobacco sunburst is more brown-brown, but still has a gold tinge, at least to my eye. The Gibson Les Paul is one of the most well-loved guitars, one that's used across many music genres. Les Paul the Man was a notable country and jazz musician. He collaborated with Gibson to design the Les Paul solid body electric guitar in the 1950s. The original editions are highly sought after by both players and collectors. I'm not a musician, but I appreciate a good guitar solo as much as the next listener, and I love the look of the Gibson Les Paul, especially in this shade. It reminds me more than a little of Hiroshizuku's now discontinued Inaho. As far as finding a replacement for that ink, I'd say Diamine's Tobacco Sunburst is a close contender. Perhaps one reason I love this color is because it makes me think of food. So many of my favorite things to eat are brown, after all. That reminds me. The other night, producer Mike and I had our first habit burgers. I mean, what could be more brown than a char-grilled beef patty on a bun? We'd heard good things about them, and since they just opened a location not too far from us, we had to check them out. Well, my Portabella burger was delicious. After the first bite, I just kept going until it was gone then realized I hadn't said a single word to producer Mike, who was still working on his double cheeseburger with bacon. Neither of us had offered the other a bite, and that's unusual because we're very sherry sherry. So that's a testament to how good those burgers were. I want to go back to Habit Burger soon because their teriyaki burger looks tempting too.
They don't call it a fast food place, but rather a fast casual restaurant, perhaps because they cook to order. I know they emphasize the quality of their ingredients, too. They have locations up and down both coasts here in the U.S. If you haven't been, I recommend checking them out. If you have been, leave a comment and let me know what else is good to eat there. Hey, we're all in this together, right? You tell me if Habit's got decent french fries, and I'll tell you not to bother with Sonic's onion rings, unless you're into onion desserts. Seriously, what does Sonic dip their onions in? Cake batter? You know, a big creative opportunity was lost here. I should have added a fat stogie to the side of the sun's mouth. Dang it. Also, I could have gone in with a wet brush and softened the lines while spreading the color in a wash-like manner. But the whole idea of this doodle book is to show how the ink and pen works together. And it would seem more like painting if a brush came into play. Sometimes the amount of decision making can make arting intimidating, even aggravating. I can understand how a person would go bonkers from it. Like how Steve Martin in Father of the Bride went to the supermarket, wigged out over hot dog buns, and ended up in jail for the night. Well, that's comparing sauce to gravy, I guess. But the gist applies. Hmm. Hot dog. Bun. Chili sauce. Excuse me while I wipe the saliva off my chin. Good thing this is a third day shirt. I'm happy to share this drooling, I mean, doodling session. Wait, what? I didn't finish writing the outro. Are you kidding me? This is like getting caught falling asleep at the wheel. Not that I've ever done that. It's only one of my worst nightmares. Like dreaming you're back in school on test day and you didn't study and you can't find your classroom, and you forgot your pants. Don't act all confused. You know what I'm talking about. Thanks for watching and for staying until the end. Until next time, stay artsy, my friends.